Many people who watched The Killer on Netflix missed some key details about The Killer's ending. In this video, I'll show you why the ending of David Fincher's The Killer is even better than you may have thought. I'll explain and spoil the real meaning of The Killer's ending in about 10 seconds. My name is Jay Shear, and as a screenwriter and director, I love a well-crafted film ending. And in my opinion, David Fincher has given us the best movie ending of 2023. Here's the major spoiler. If you haven't seen The Killer, you may want to click away. Ready? The Killer dies. We don't see it because the film cuts to the credits before we see his slow, painful death, but he's definitely going to die. Since it sounds like most people are missing the key moments that inform us of his impending death, let's break it down in more detail. Seconds before the film ends, we see the muscles in the killer's cheek twitch. I've heard intelligent film analysts claim that his face twitches because he's finally relaxing after his stressful life of crime. I've also heard others postulate the opposite, that he's not sure if he'll ever leave his former life behind, and the twitch is a nervous tick that he started to develop because he's anxious. But those takes miss what's really happening. The killer's face twitches because he's starting to experience facial necrosis. How do I know? Let's break down the evidence. First, we've got the killer's conversation with the client. When the killer confronts the client, he threatens the client by telling him that he could kill him at any time. He specifically mentions planting a radioactive speck on the rim of the client's coffee mug. And he says that if he were to do that, the client would die a slow, painful death from facial necrosis. If I have to come back, Maybe a radioactive speck to molip your favorite coffee mug. A slow death, mind you, from painful facial necrosis. Why would the screenwriter and David Fincher use such a specific description in a line of dialogue? Because they're foreshadowing the killer's death. But that's not entirely conclusive all by itself, so let's take a look at the second clue. After the killer leaves the client, the film takes us to the epilogue in the Dominican Republic. The first shot we see in the epilogue is a shot of what? A coffee mug. That coffee mug doesn't have a radioactive speck on it, but it's there to remind us of the threat the killer made to the client. It's meant to trigger our memory of the killer threatening to plant a radioactive speck on the client's coffee mug. But the killer never drinks from that mug. So where did the killer come in contact with a radioactive speck that causes his face to twitch and will eventually kill him from facial necrosis? You've probably already guessed it, but let's take a look at some more evidence. We have to go back in time a couple days to the killer's encounter with the expert, which reveals two key clues. First, when the killer forces the expert out toward the waterfront at gunpoint after she's finished her meal, the expert says something odd. She claims that when the killer is about to die, he'll be thinking of her, that her life will flash before his eyes, not his own. You'll remember our conversation. When your time does arrive, it won't be your life flashing before your eyes, it'll be mine. Now why would she say that? Why would the killer think about the expert while he's dying? Because she's the one who planted the radioactive speck on his glass that gave him facial necrosis. Which brings us to the second piece of evidence from their encounter. The killer drinks the whiskey from the expert's glass, meaning that the radioactive speck was either placed on her glass or in the whiskey. That is the radioactive speck that will eventually kill him and cause his face to twitch at the end of the film. The screenwriter and David Fincher call her the expert for a reason. Like the killer, she has hundreds of ways to assassinate her targets. What's one of those ways? Having them share a drink with her from her deadly bottle of whiskey. And when she invites the killer to share a drink with her, he does. When he drinks from the glass, her reaction is subtle, but there's a fleeting expression of what we later come to realize is true. She got him. She knows that despite the fact that she's about to die, the killer will die too. And it will be a slow, painful death from facial 
Necrosis. I love how subtle this film's ending is. And the ending of the killer proves to be a critical piece in regards to understanding the story. When we know the killer dies at the hands of the expert, it changes the premise of the film. The ending isn't one where the main character rides off into the sunset having learned the error of his ways. Instead, the killer thinks he made it out of his former life unscathed, but he hasn't because the kind of life that he lived has consequences. The killer doesn't escape his former life, he succumbs to it. And that, of course, aligns with the kind of premises that David Fincher uses in many of his films. Fincher doesn't tend to end films with characters feeling good about their lives. He often ends films with painful truths. We can't escape our choices, and life doesn't suddenly turn toward good. Our worldview, values, and behaviors have consequences. I love the ending of The Killer because it solidifies the film's premise. Nihilism destroys itself and those who adhere to it. Fantastic stuff. What did you think of The Killer's ending? Did you get it the first time you watched? Or maybe you have a different take. Maybe you saw it a different way. Either way, let me know in the comments down below. And be sure to check out the trailer for my film, No Vacancy. wrote and directed it and it'll be coming out in 2024 also if you want a super deep dive into the rest of this film not just the ending be sure to watch my video on the killer explained it's 47 minutes long of me explaining the structure the premise and exactly what's going on with the character development in the killer thanks for watching and i will see you on the next show